episode of the Sacred Sisterhood podcast. So today we are going to be talking about embracing our multidimensionality. And so there's a lot of words being thrown out there in the spiritual world right now with, you know, multidimensionality and ascension and quantum leaping and so forth. And I'm a quantum alchemist, so I love this. This is my kind of vocabulary. Vocabulary. This is very much in resonance with the work that I do and the work that I do within my own energy field. And so I really wanted to dive in today of how we can ground the term of multidimensionality and actually use it in our day-to-day to support us in expanding into our desired reality. So there are thousands and thousands and thousands of versions of yourself out there operating in other timelines. And the beautiful thing are, is that there are timelines out there where you have already accomplished the thing, done it all, you're living in abundance and wealth, you have a great relationship, you're very happy, your, your joy and your love is expanding, your heart chakra is blasted open, your bank account is always expanding, you're traveling, you're eating organic foods, you're running your own business, you work with soulmate clients, you know, life is pretty great, right? And if you already are, have been doing this work for a while and things are looking really great in your life, that's awesome. There's always some, there's always a level up though that we're working towards, right? You wouldn't be listening to this podcast and be interested in this field of subject otherwise, correct? So what I want to talk about today is how we can really tune in and converse with our future versions of ourselves, even though the future version really isn't the future, right? She's out there right alongside us doing the thing, right? There isn't no, there isn't a such thing as past and future. It's all, time isn't linear, right? It's all happening simultaneously. So we actually can tune into our energy, that version of ourselves that is in that timeline that we desire to expand into to call forth her activations, her energy, her wisdom, her guidance, her strength, her, all of it, her magic, right? Her energy field. And we can do that so easily now because we are really becoming masters in our energy field. And those aspects of ourselves are so easy to call upon now. This isn't like a far out there topic anymore for for those that have been kind of maneuvering through the spiritual realms for a hot minute, right? So when you have a goal in mind, right? So say you are preparing yourself to you're getting ready to bring your sacred work out into the world, right? There's a lot of people that listen to this podcast that have gifts, they have healing abilities, but there's a lot of resistance that they are working towards to really like clean up their energy field before they feel confident enough to launch their business, right? And that's specifically the the client that I work with is the woman who knows she has magic, knows that she has gifts, but knows that she still has a lot of that internal energetic muck and fuckery really to <laughs> to clean up before she feels very powerful to step forward into the world and be like, hey, I'm ready to be seen. I'm ready to serve, right? So I'm going to speak to this woman specifically to give an example, a strong example. The woman who wants to develop or wants to build a business based on her sacred work. Right. And but right now she's still working her nine to five. She has no idea how that's supposed to look. Maybe she's starting to make some posts on social media, but she still is very much kind of spiraling out in the energetic swampiness of the limiting beliefs of the self doubt of the resistance of that fear of persecution, that fear of being seen, the fear of abandonment, the fear of being judged, the fear of failure and then there's always that fear of success looped in there that was like <laughs> it's so funny because I think almost every single entrepreneur experiences this at the beginning and they always of course we tap into new layers each time that we we hit a glass ceiling right there's always going to be layers to unravel there's that fear of success right because maybe we weren't raised around people that were super successful so we don't know what it really looks like or perhaps our parents taught us that 
people that are wealthy are greedy and evil and it tears families apart and they basically you know made it seem bad to be wealthy right so there's that fear of success that comes up or that fear of if i'm successful it means that you know the government's going to take all my money and i'm going to have to pay so much in tax and and so forth right or that fear of success in a sense that what if, if i lose it all but looped in there is also that fear of failure and that's something that i had i had both fears that i had to work through was the fear of failure and the fear of success where literally I was just spiraling out, spinning out in the same space because I was afraid to take any steps forward because I was afraid to succeed. But then it also, I was beating myself up because I wasn't taking steps. So I was afraid of failure. And so it was just like this really nasty spiral that I had to really do a lot of deep clearing through. So I want to give you some some steps of how you can begin to work through this and shift out of that resistance, collapse some of that funky energy so that you can begin to embody that version of yourself that's already done the thing, who's already built a successful business where soulmate clients are pouring in, where she has a wait list of people that are wanting to work with her, where she gets to travel as much as she wants. And, you know, she gets to stay in five star places and she gets to spend money on massages and acupuncture and buy her organic vegan foods. And, you know, like she's, she's doing good. She's feeling great. Life is great. She's in service, right? So, Think of the goal that you have in mind. Really visualize what that would mean for your life. What this timeline looks like. What the version of you who who has already accomplished it, what is she doing? How is she feeling? Really tune into that. And then ask yourself, really tune into your body. Where in my body am I holding resistance? Is it, you know, my solar plexus? Is it my throat, maybe my womb, maybe my root, my heart? Really just tune in. Where is it that my body is like, "Mm, nope, nope. And just ask yourself, what parts of me are not fully on board with this vision? Because we can't, we cannot expand into that vision without looking at those parts that aren't fully for it, right? And there are always going to be parts that are not fully for it until you witness, observe, love it, and release it. So don't pretend that all parts of you are on board with this because there are subconscious fears that are like, no, 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 right? (laughs) So really tune in. Okay. Is it this fear that I'm not good enough? Is it this fear that, you know, I've never seen people make money as healers being, um, you know, I have never seen that in my life before in my own circle. You know, I always saw like the broke artist or so forth, right? You know, just really tune in, you know, maybe it's, I don't believe that I'm going to be supported. Maybe it's, I'm afraid that my family is going to abandon me. Right? That old witch wound coming forth. I'm afraid of the judgment, that fear of persecution coming up. Right? Really just tune in. Maybe you don't believe that you are worthy of this vision. And that's a big thing that we always, as entrepreneurs, need to move into is is new levels of self-worth and self-reverence. Right? Because so many of us don't believe that we are worthy of that next level up of receiving payment for our, for our gifts, for our services, for our magic, of receiving a lifestyle where we're free from the nine to five and we're able to travel and, you know, only work a few hours a day. Am I, do I actually believe that I'm worthy of such? So really just begin to tune in as to what parts of you are resisting it. Okay. And then once you begin to uncover some of that subconscious self doubt and those limiting beliefs that are lurking in the background, then you get to ask yourself, where did I learn this belief? Because you know that this belief is not actually yours. It was put onto you by society, by your parents, by cultural conditioning. You were not born with this belief. Okay. 
perhaps it's ancestral, but when you came out of the womb, you were a pure source, fully, fully just your soul, the purest form of love. You didn't have all these imprints and conditions on you. You learned that, okay? So just really ask yourself when you've narrowed in on what the limiting belief, where did I learn this belief? And then drop into meditation and just ask your subconscious mind to take you to the earliest memory in which you learned this belief. And go wherever it takes you. Could be when you were 10, it could be when you were three. You may be taken to a past life where you were burned as a witch, or maybe you were a massage therapist or an herbalist in like the 12th, 13th century, and you were burned for that. And then when you're taken into that memory, it's an opportunity for you to begin to reprogram where you can move into that memory and see what was being programmed into you and then choose something different. Notice how you adapted that belief. Maybe you saw your parents claim bankruptcy at a really a really young age and you saw them lose everything. So you developed this fear of success. Probably also the fear of failure. <laughs> And just begin to talk to that version of yourself to begin to shift it. Begin to start a new belief system of I learned this old outdated belief of I am not good enough or I'm afraid of success because this is what was modeled to me. This is what I was told. But I know now that I am an infinite abundant being, light being of source and I'm fully supported and I'm fully worthy of receiving and I am so, so, so worthy. And it's safe for me to be successful. It's safe for me to be abundant. It's safe for me to choose my expansion. And I choose my expansion. And just really have that dialogue to clear up some of that subconscious blueprint fuckery, which we all have. So when we drop into that deep state of meditation, we access the subconscious mind so we can begin to clear out some of that and program something else in, right? And then I want you to call forth that future version of yourself who's operating in another dimension who has done the goal that you are working towards achieving. And I want you to begin to feel into her energy. I want you to ask her what she does in her day to day. How does she feel? Who is with her? Ask her what the next step is. Ask her what you need to know. And just ask her to activate you, to fill you with the frequencies that are required of you to create this. And just thank her for guiding you. And just see your energy field beginning to mirror hers. See yourself becoming her. And then when you pull yourself out of meditation, take an action step. That action step grounds it into the physical. That action step is subconscious reprogramming 101 as, okay, I've created some space in my subconscious mind, cleared out some of the old beliefs, I've imprinted a new one. Now I'm going to take an action step to ground in and anchor in that new belief system. And the more action steps you take that empowers the new belief system, the stronger and deeper in that it integrates, right? So when you are faced with resistance, I encourage you to love that part of yourself and have a conversation with her because she's just trying to keep you safe. That's all that is. There's this old version of you, probably your inner child, that just wants to keep you safe and that's what she thinks she's doing by trying to keep you in your comfort zone because when you're in your comfort zone, you're safe. So you need to remind her that she is safe, she is loved, that you are protecting her and that you are so you are being cradled by the divine. And that it's safe for you to expand. It's safe for you to bring your work out into the world. It's safe for you to launch that blog, to write that post. It's safe for you to invest in that coach, invest in that training. Mm -hmm. 
And the longer that you can hold this frequency, that consciousness of that future, even though it's not really future, right? Version of yourself, that multi-dimensional version of yourself was already done in. The longer you can hold that frequency in the consciousness, the deeper it integrates in, the more locked in and real it becomes. So just continue to shift your energy into that version of yourself that's already accomplished it, that's already done it, that is feeling so incredibly blissful and prosperous and abundant and successful and confident, powerful. Because you are her. You are upgrading to her. You are just releasing those frequencies, those denser frequencies that cannot come with you into this next step. That's all this is. Every time you hit a glass ceiling, right, as you stretch out of your comfort zone, all your baggage, energetic baggage, comes to surface for you to unpack and let go of because it cannot energetically sustain at this new level. So you can choose to allow yourself to get drowned in this energetic baggage where you just don't end up taking any steps forward and you just keep spiraling out, con continuing to knock your head up against that ceiling, that glass ceiling, but never breaking through. Or you can be like, okay, energetic baggage, I see you, I love you, I recognize what you've been trying to do to keep me safe, but I am safe. It is safe for me to be of more light. It is safe for me to be in my power. It is safe for me to be in my radiant expression, fullest expression of myself. It's safe for me to be in my full brilliance. I got this. I got this. I got you. And I choose something different. I choose to take an inspired action step that will continue to anchor in this new belief system until I fully see it reflected out into my reality because it's so deeply integrate into my cells, my energy field, my bones, my DNA, and so forth. Okay, so the more action steps that we take from that embodied consciousness, embodied consciousness of who we are desiring to rise into, the more real it becomes that you are her. Okay? But there, it, there tends to be like a certain amount of time where you kind of spiral out as you're hitting that glass ceiling, as you're meeting up with all that resistance, right? And so the best way to reprogram it is to drop into the subconscious mind, do some clearing, plug in a new belief system, love this part of yourself, and then take an action step. And even if that action step isn't directly related to your business or whatever it is that you're desiring to bring out into the world, you know, take an action step that is still going towards that direction. It could be, say you're wanting to write a blog, right? And you've been getting really tripped up about it. Like, what if people... You know, what if my old high school friends see this blog and judge me? What if, if I'm not consistent with posting on it every single week, right? So when you drop into clearing up some of that fear of judgment, fear of persecution, and so forth, then it's an invitation for you to take an action step towards that. So it may not necessarily mean you sitting down and writing a blog, it could be you, you know, going on YouTube and watching a YouTube training of how to start a blog, right? That's an action step. That's you reaffirming that, okay, this is the direction I'm going. I'm choosing something different. Here we go. Or it could be you setting the stage for yourself to get inspired so that you can write, which means, you know, maybe going out into the woods for the afternoon, touching the trees, talking to the forest, putting your hands in the in the beautiful waters of the of the of the brooks and the creeks and you know sitting on moss and talking to the birds, listening to the birds and just really being in mother nature, allowing mother nature to fill your energy field so you are inspired and then you will feel inspired to write. And that writing doesn't have to be done directly on the blog because maybe you don't have that blog set up yet, but maybe you sit down and just write on your notes on your laptop, your first blog post, so that when you launch your blog, you already have a post put up. Okay, so 
we basically have a choice each day. Are we going to feed that version of ourselves, that it, our ego that is afraid? Or are we going to feed that lioness within us who is dying to roar and be wild and loud and make her mark on this world? Which one are you going to feed? Because the one that you feed more often is going to become stronger. So if you continue to feed into the fear, that's just going to continue to expand. But if you do choose that, nope, no more, I'm going to feed into my power. I'm going to feed into my fire, into my lioness. I'm going to allow her to roar. The more you feed her, the louder and more powerful she becomes. Okay? So I'm going to leave it at that. And I also wanted to let you ladies know that I do have a six-week digital course that's going to be launching. I am hoping in two weeks, I'm working with a graphic designer, right? not a graphic designer, a web designer right now to get something funky fixed on the sales page so that there can be a payment plan option. Um, so yes, I'm hoping within the next two weeks, it'll be up and running so that we can start start filling the first round of the course, which will be launching at the beginning, or sorry, the middle of March. And it will have a Facebook group to support you for the first six weeks. It will have three sets, or sorry, three two-week modules. So it's it's six weeks all together. And these modules are video modules, comes with PDF journaling exercises, as well as guided meditations. And it's going to be focusing on helping you become a master of your energy field and in the quantum field to become a powerful manifester. So this is going to help you come into deeper relationship with your the temple of your body, with your self-worth, with your energy field in general, with learning how you know to open portals, to cast circles, to do this subconscious reprogramming to collapse limiting beliefs, to expand into your desired reality, to plant the seed in the quantum field of the reality that you desire to expand into and how to match your frequency with who it is that you're desiring to rise into and clear out any of those dense frequencies that are not on board. So I'm really, really excited about this. This has been in the works for quite some time now. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of energy behind this course. And I'm so excited to be able to give you some more information in the in the podcast to come, in the weeks to come, as things continue to roll out and the ball really gets rolling on it. Um, so yeah, stay tuned on that. And once again, I'm going to invite you to join the Sacred She Pack Facebook community on Facebook. It's a beautiful community where lots of things are being posted every single day to support you in your ascension journey. And I am wishing you a beautiful weekend. I'm off to Portugal this weekend for my husband's 40th birthday. So it's going to be a weekend filled with lots of laughter and dancing and hanging out with the Irish, which is always some crack, as they like to say. (laughs) And I hope you have the most magical new moon in Pisces coming up this weekend. And a smooth mercury retrograde thank you so much for listening i appreciate you so so much and have a beautiful blissful day bye